Hello people, my name is Jennifer Landis. I'm the Creole Diva from New Orleans, Louisiana. Today I'm going to show you how I make my version of potato salad and fried fish. First, I took some celery, I chopped it up. In here I have celery, I have onions, I have green onions, I have garlic, and I have uh, parsley. I'm going to mince that up. Where I'm from, we don't like big pieces of seafood. I mean, not seafood. Big pieces of seasoning in our potato salad. So you grind it up. It don't have to be too small, but this is like the texture that I want. And that's going in my potato salad. And then I'm going to chop up my eggs in here. So we're going to put this out the way. And I had all of that chopped up ahead of time. I always chop that up ahead of time. I brought my potatoes ahead of time because I don't like making potato salad with hot potatoes because it'll break up and you got mashed potatoes. So I cook my potatoes ahead of time, either the night before or the morning of, which I did this morning. So now I'm going to chop my eggs, which is brown eggs, regular brown eggs. And that's it. Okay. Now for my potatoes. They've already been burned. I use russet potatoes. I'm going to chop them up. I could grind them, but I don't want to mash. Like I said, I don't want mashed potatoes. I could have used a potato masher, but I'll use a knife. I got most of these recipes from either my grandmothers, my mom, aunts. I've been cooking since I was a teenager. You might as well say. When I used to go by my grandmother on weekends, I'd be standing right there by the stove when her and her sister would be getting family dinners together or whatever for the holidays, for Sundays. So I come from old school cooking. I don't buy no seasoning that's already chopped up from the stove. I want to chop my own seasoning up because you have a fresher taste. All right, then we're going to add our eggs. Okay, then the seasoning. Not all of this. You don't really need all of this, but you need enough. Mix all of this up. I still got some hunks in there, but I can always chop it up before I serve it. Okay, then pickle relish. Let me pick out pickle relish in the cabinet. pickle relish. Some people like sweet relish. You get sweet potato salad with sweet relish. I don't like sweet potatoes salad and most of my family don't. So I use the dill pickle relish. It doesn't matter what kind. 
as long as it's dill pickle relish. And you're only using like two tablespoons. I put a little bit of mustard. That's enough mustard because I don't like mustard potato salad. That's what I'm gonna fit. Mayonnaise. And some people like their potato salad kind of soupy. I don't like mine soupy, but I don't. Fix it where it's so thick. Then whatever kind of seasoning, some people use seasonal. I use seasonal, I use salt, I use black pepper. I already have garlic, fresh garlic in there. But most of the time I add a little bit, I'm making a mess. I add a little bit garlic powder. Now see, that's enough mayonnaise in there. I don't really need a whole lot of mayonnaise. Let me just turn it and make sure you got all the bottom with your seasoning and your mayonnaise. And then, uh, I'll get my <laughs> I usually mix garlic powder and pepper together to make my own but I've been having that that I've been using recently this is ground mustard just a touch of that This is Tony Saturay's Creole seasoning. Don't use a lot of it because it's salty and it's pepperish. So only a few sprinkles. And like I say, garlic. I have garlic powder, but I like the pepper taste. And that is, I get a bigger fork and stir this around. And this is my version of potato salad. Like I say, people do their potato salad all different kind of ways. You learn from your ancestors and you do things their way. This is my version. Like I say, people put different things in there. Some people put vinegar. Uh, some people put bell pepper. I cook with bell pepper, but not in my potato salad. So that's my potato salad. Now, I need to get ready for my fish. That is tilapia. You can use any kind of fish you want, but I just happen to have tilapia, and this was the frozen tilapia. That's why it looks so big. Usually, I buy my seafood from the store, Oh, I'll go to the seafood place and I'll get some, but that is what I have, so we're going to use that. Tilapia, I use tilapia because it fries easy. I mean, you can use any kind of fish you want, whatever you like. And this, I use vegetable oil because it don't burn as fast. And it has a different flavor. Some people fry it in corn oil. Some things I fry in corn oil. Like oysters and shrimp. I fry those in corn oil because I like the taste of it. Now for my cornmeal, I use just what it is. Cornmeal. I don't use the stuff in the box because sometimes it tends to be too salty. And I don't use the stuff that says cornmeal mix. Because it's mixed with flour. This is pure cornmeal. 
and it comes in a different way. I get this from the store in uh, West We Go, the seafood market. Uh, you can get it at the store. It comes in a little round container by Quaker. I think it's Quaker. Uh, but as long as it says corn meal, you got the right stuff. And then this is Old Bay seasoning. This is something that was out since I was a little girl. That my grandmother, both my grandmothers used it. Uh, just put a little bit of that in there. Because like I said, that's pepperish also. And salt and pepper. And some people put a lot of different things on their fish. I like my seafood to taste like seafood. So I don't put mustard. I don't put garlic powder. Like I said, you can put what you want. You know, so I put a little bit in there and then I'm gonna just go on and salt and pepper my fish. Now on one side, I use the salt. On the other side, I use the old bait. Turn that up a little. On this side, I use the old bay. And when I use the old bay on the other side, and most of the time I'll take a paper towel and I'll dry my fish off before I season it. All right, so that's it for that. Now, once my grease get hot, Take a little whisk and I stir this up and mix it all in there. And some people might say, well, how you know you got enough salt in that cornmeal? Okay, all you got to do is this. Taste the salt. <laughs> <laughs> well, that's how I learned how to do it, y'all. This grease, I should have had this grease on earlier, but my secret is I don't dump all my fish in there. Okay, so one, like I said, one piece at a time in here. I don't dump it all in there because it'll get soggy. So I put it in there. I'm not going to do it now because my grease is still not hot to where I need it. But take the piece of fish. You put it in there. I put it, dump, turn it over, do both sides. And then you put it right in your hot grease in your frying pan. I don't let it sit because, like I said, it gets soggy. And I don't use an egg wash because I don't like that crispy. Now, if I was doing tempura fish, yeah, I would use an egg wash. And then the... Uh, some people do it like that, but I, like I said, I learned from old school. This is how we did it. So I'm just waiting on my grease. So my grease should be hot because I put the thermometer in there and it came up to like 350. So like I said, we're gonna do one piece at a time. These pieces of fish are big. I'm used to smaller pieces of tilapia. And I don't do them all, I just do them. And I put it in meat side down. I'm gonna just put one in there since the fish is so big. So we'll do this one, then we'll do another one. And this, by this type of fish, bean tilapia, tilapia, it curls up at the end when it fries. So, you're going to tell it's finished by the, the color. I don't like a dark, dark brown piece of fish because sometimes it gets dry. But when it gets dark golden brown, then you know it's ready. But you're going to let it fry maybe like six or seven minutes on one side. And then you're going to turn it over. And if you turn it over and it doesn't look as brown as you want it, put it back. Turn it back as long as you... Uh, have that grease bubbling like that. But once you take that piece of fish out, 
it's the grease is gonna get a little cooler. So what happened is before you put another piece in, make sure you test your grease to see if it bubbles. And you can do that with just a little cornmeal. Well, I mean, people try it how they want, but this is how I learned how to do it. From the old school. Like right now, my grandmother would be a hundred something. Oops, oops, be careful. Because I'm using this big thing. I probably could turn that back over because that's a little lighter than what I want, but it's over. And I could let it get a little browner, but this is about how I'm used to seeing it. I mean my grandmother, you know, her sister, my other grandmother, my aunt. Y'all hear them comments in the background. That's my mama, Miss Gert. The flowery lady. Say hey, Grandma. Howdy. <laughs> That's my critic in there. <laughs> All right, so I usually, everybody usually eat ketchup with it. Um, I can make a tartar sauce, but how I make mine is I only use like uh, the dill relish and I mix mayonnaise in it, just that simple. And I might put a touch of garlic powder in it, I might put a touch of cayenne pepper, or I might put a dash of hot sauce in it. Um, and that's the tartar sauce. While well, that's fine, I can show y'all. We can make a little. But like I say, my family is the ketchup. I say a little bit tartar sauce. And mayonnaise. And this is about two and a half teaspoons, tablespoons, really. And I'll just mix that together. And a couple of dashes of hot sauce in there. Oh, I'll get that. <laughs> and like I said, that's my tartar sauce. A little garlic powder. You don't really need salt in there. Um, you can put pepper. But um, you don't need salt because your mayonnaise got salt, your relish got salt, and you don't want it too salty where it ruins the taste of your, your fish. So there we have it. A minute tartar sauce. <laughs> okay, let's take this piece of fish out. That's about the color that I want. That's the color I'm looking for. And let's see if it's still gonna bubble. And it's still bubbles, so that means my grease is still hot. I can put another piece in there. And like I say, meat side down. And I'm put it in the center. And that's what this is what it looks like. Let me get closer. That's the texture and the color that I'm used to. Some people like it darker, some people like it lighter. But if you go to that color, 
it won't be dry. Like maybe it'll sit for an hour. Um, maybe not. Well, in this house, it won't sit that long. But if you fry fish for a large group of people, what you do is when you fry it, you put it in a big pan, possibly an aluminum pan, lined with some uh, paper towels. Put your fish in there after you fry it. Your oven doesn't really have to be on, but I put mine on the lowest temperature, like the lowest temperature on this oven is 150. So I will put the, the oven on 150, put the fish in an aluminum pan, and then I'll cover it with some furrow and just let it sit in there until I'm ready to serve. But if you're just doing a few pieces, you can just let it sit. And she, you can break it and show them the, the texture on the inside and stuff. And it's flaky. It's not mushy on the inside. And all your grease, if you use vegetable oil, all your grease is, is going to be back in the pan. Like I said, you can tell this is not a greasy piece of fish. Because when mm -hmm. she broke it, you didn't see grease coming out of it and stuff. I use vegetable oil. Some people use corn. I use corn oil, like I said before. I use corn oil for shrimps and oysters. Uh, I might do some oysters next week. I might do some oysters and shrimps next week. For all these seafood lovers. I'm a seafood lover. My family, we like seafood. We were born and raised with seafood. <laughs> My mom had uncles that every Friday... We would have seafood because they would go out on Wednesday and Thursday. They had a boat. Um, they all retired from the post office. They had a boat. They would go out in their boat, catch stuff, bring it back. And my grandmother would cook it. You did have a boat. Uncle John. The critic is in there telling me, I don't know what I'm talking about, but I remember that boat. <laughs> okay. I'm going to give my critic in the room the first taste. And she's the potato salad lover. So if it ain't right, she gonna tell me. You want ketchup with it, Grandma? Yeah, on the fish. On the, on the fish. fish. I'm not, you gonna do that. I'm not ruining my piece of fish with that. Shake it. Shake that ketchup. <laughs> I'll just put the ketchup on the side. She ruining my piece of fish. Ketchup. Hold it up, don't catch the floor. All right, let Leora know how you like it. That fish could have been a little brown. Oh, it's tough. It's crispy. You should have started from this end where I broke it already. Oh, yeah. Don't bleed around. She's so picky, yo. Mm -hmm. It's good. You said taste her potato salad and let them know. So you say the fish is good, huh? Mm -hmm. She like it, y'all. She gonna tell y'all the truth. Mm -hmm. This is good or nasty. She like it. Mm -hmm. <laughs> mm -hmm. It's delicious. You taste the potato salad. It's good. <laughs> All right, y'all. Miss Gertie says it's good, so that's approved fish new orleans fried fish and potato salad you gonna tell the camera about it grandma i know 